So we have a very specialized tutorial today because you've seen the thumbnail, you see the preview here, and you know we're gonna create a mosaic type slideshow with a lot of videos and photos. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope everyone is doing awesome. So this is gonna be a quick tutorial. You know, it seems like this could be a, like a lot of work, but I'm gonna show you some quick techniques that's going to help you put together a full you know, slideshow with all these different photos or videos together in one composition. We're gonna combine it together and create something that's awesome really quick. So let's jump in, let's get started. All right, and as always, you can download our project files for free to follow along with this video. Link will be in the description. Now, here we are in our blank composition, and all we have in here is a white background. You can do any color you want, doesn't matter. All right, so what we're gonna do is first we need images or video to do this, obviously, right? So we have all of our images imported over here uh, inside of our project, and we can start pulling through and putting in some pictures. So I'll go ahead and grab this picture right here, and I'll bring it into my comp. And what you're going to want to do is just pre-compose it. You go to layer, pre-compose, and we can call it image one. It's important to put a number and just move all attributes into new comp. Click OK. Then we'll go into that composition and we'll grab our image and we can hit S on keyboard for scale and we can scale it down. Now, the reason why we pre-composed it, well, there's multiple reasons why, but the first thing you want to do is go up to composition and click on composition settings. Make sure it's 1920 by 1080 or any like 16 by 9 aspect ratio or whatever aspect ratio you want, but that's, you know, good frame for this, okay? So back in our tutorial composition, we'll have our image one right here, right? So what we can do is scale this back down. So now we can put more images in here and it's going to be easy for us to work through this. So what we want to do is first of all, take our image one and we'll go up to edit duplicate and we'll grab it, hold down shift on our keyboard to make sure it won't budge anywhere. You know, just want to have a nice little gap here and that's fine. And what we'll do here is duplicate it again and we'll put it over here to the other side. So we're kind of creating this three by three grid of photos or videos. And then all we have to do is we'll come here to our project window and you'll see the composition that we made. It's called image one. And all we have to do is duplicate that. And in your case, it would be image two. I had to rename it to 12 in my case, but all we have to do is take this image 12 and we'll make sure one image in here is selected. We'll hold down alt on keyboard and we'll click and drag it on into our timeline. And this will replace that composition, meaning we can go into comp, you know, two image two, and we can bring in another image or video. I'll just bring that in there and I can scale this image down, put it into any place we need to, and then I'll go back into our tutorial composition and that automatically updates. So again, I come here to our tutorial or into our project window and I can duplicate this. It'll be image three in your case. Grab image 11 here, hold down alt on my keyboard and I can replace it, right? Then I go into that composition and I can find another image, put that in there, scale it down, do whatever we have to do to resize it, close those comps and boom, everything's updated in our main composition. Then all we have to do here is grab these three. We can duplicate them, bring them to the top so we don't get anything out of order and we can just bring them up like this if you want you can you know be really cool and offset them like that no problem you can duplicate this bring them top bring these ones down and you can move them to the other side if you want you nothing too crazy and now we have this three by three grid so therefore the only thing we have left to do is come back here to our project window duplicate these a few times and then we can start replacing these with the alt you know uh, alt on your keyboard technique and we'll go into those comps, bring in some new images. So by using those quick techniques to duplicate and replace your images, you can put in you know a lot of images really quick. And we, you can even put in a video as you can see we have down here. So that's really cool. So all we have to do is animate this together and we can move on to doing something a little bit more advanced like this. So how do we animate this? Well, no worries. What we'll do is come here to layer new null object right there. Took me a second to find it. And what we can do is find one row of images here and we can pick whip it to the null object. So parent it and we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline and we can just hit P on keyboard for position. And we'll add a keyframe for that. We can move forward to the end of the animation. Let's say like, I don't know, four seconds and we can move the X position. So we, this will be animated. The top row will be moving and that's cool. And we can also do the same exact thing. So we can create another null object and we can grab, say, the bottom row here and parent that to the null. Do the same thing, add a quick uh, X position animation, 
and we'll do it to the other side. So now we have a very slight animation here and if you want these to go faster you can always add more images onto the edges here but that's completely up to you uh, if you want to do that. But I want to just do one quick thing. I want to grab everything in this composition except for a white background and we'll go up to a uh, layer pre-compose and we'll just call it one. And what we can do here is come here to the beginning of the timeline, hit Astro keyboard for scale and we'll add a keyframe for it. And we'll move forward here to the end and we can slightly scale in. And this way it will add a little bit more movement to our overall composition and I like it. And before we move further, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, which is us. And I want to take a look at our motion graphics starter pack, which has 500 templates. This is our motion graphics starter pack with all 500 templates in here that we can preview and apply into any After Effects composition. We have titles, accent motion graphics, animated background, shape transitions, and more. And what's great about it, we can preview everything before we apply it. So for example, what if we want to spruce this composition up? We have something here called clusters, and I love using these. So I can preview what I want, click apply. And within a click of a button, we can spruce up our composition with some accent graphics. Um, and we can go in, into that composition and change those colors. But, you know, what if we want some titles? Well, no problem. We can come here to our regular titles and we can find a title that we would like to use. So we can preview exactly what we need. And when we find a title that we want to apply, we just go ahead and apply that. And within a second, it applies our title animation. And of course, we need to go into that composition and we grab our textile tool and we can easily go and change out our text and we can go to our control layer and expand any edges change our color and everything updates in our composition and we can get work done extremely fast with just a few clicks so if you want to check out our motion graphics starter pack or any of our other packs on our website that link will be below if you pick up anything you will be supporting our channel so thank you very much all right so i want to move on to our second slide here which is a little bit more advanced but it's still really easy to do um and essentially all it is is rotated in 3d space and you know it looks seamless as well so and i'm not going to start from scratch because you know it's exactly the same exact techniques as before except it's the composition is actually a little bit larger so you want to make your comp a little bit bigger for this one if you're going to rotate it in 3d space because you're going to need extra images kind of off screen if you will to, in order to do this correctly but it's the exact same technique we have a 4x4 grid here and we just have our very simple motion going up and down instead of side to side. So it's essentially the same exact thing. So when you have all that done, you know, all laid out, you can come back here to tutorial composition and we'll bring that comp into our main composition. And we'll want to obviously cut up the first comp, just delete that in and we'll have this one come on right here and we'll toggle switch modes and we'll make this a 3D layer. And we'll hit R on our keyboard for rotation and we can Increase the X rotation. We can also, you know, mess with the Y rotation by a tad. We can also, you know, move it over. I'm saying also a lot, but that's cool. And you know, there's that. You can always scale it up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to reposition. And you know, you can get some unique looks with it. By playing with the rotations, you'll get your creative perspective here. And you can see you can create a 4x4 grid as well. The last thing I want to talk about is being able to do this transition between the two because if you're doing multiple slides, say if you're trying to put up like a title or like a logo, you want to be able to have a seamless transition if you want to put in multiple scenes. And this is really easy to do. So we have our two slides here and you know it's a very basic cut between them. There's nothing exciting to it. So what we'll do is we'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And the first thing we'll do is go to effect distort and we'll grab optics compensation and we'll add a keyframe for field of view right before the cut between the two clips we'll come here to the cut between the two comps we'll increase the field of view up to like i don't know 100 check on reverse lens distortion so you get this you know unique warp here and that's nice let it play through a little bit and then set it back down to zero a really quick transition over but we're not done there i want it to go up to effect uh, blur and sharpen and I'm gonna grab a Gaussian blur for this right there and as before you know we can come before the transition we'll add a keyframe for blurriness we'll go after transitions over uh, and we get you on keyboard and we'll add a keyframe for that and right at the cut we can increase the blurriness up to you know 20 repeat edge pixels so this will add like another dynamic to our transition between two different clips here so we can have multiple you know slideshows put together depending on what you want to do and that looks pretty cool now one little technique i want to apply before finishing this off uh, is go up to effect color correction curves you don't have to do this but i like to take the top point here and bring it down and take the bottom point and bring it up for the sort of thing maybe not so much on the top point but 
This kind of helps blend all the photos together or at least match them as best as possible. You know, just take a look at that. Just a suggestion, not something that you have to do. So that's our tutorial on creating a quick slideshow with a mosaic photo effects right here in After Effects. I hope you found it useful and are able to create your very own uh, slideshow in your unique way. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creative.